It's my great pleasure and honor to be here with Rabbi Chaim Seidlerfeller, who is the Director Emeritus of the UCLA Hillel, and is also currently the uh, Director of the Hartman Fellowship for Campus Professionals. I had the wonderful honor of, of working for and being a student of uh, Rav Chaim for, uh, for some years at, at UCLA Hillel, and it's a great honor to be able to have a, a short conversation here about an issue that I think is one of the most pressing I just wanted to interrupt, and I, and I yeah. spent two years <laughs> running after Shmuel, so. <laughs> so, so um, yes, it's very true. Um, so running for challah. <laughs> so um, one of the important issues of our time is, uh, is, is pluralism, that people feel they hold the absolute truth and they're willing to alienate or even act violently towards people who don't hold their truth. And, I, and so I guess the first question for you is, what do you think is the wisest of Jewish philosophies that steer us in the right direction towards embracing a pluralistic ethos uh, on a practical level, but in an epistemic pluralism, like in the deepest sense, understanding plurality on a philosophical, theological level? Right. Yeah. So, so I, I think that pluralism, pluralism is built into the essence of the definition of a Jew. Wow. Because if you understand Judaism as a particular, as having which 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 we which by self definition we are we are not like anybody else we define ourselves as having a point of view we're not like any other nation so if you understand that we are not like any other nation then other nations must have different ways of looking at the world as well now at some point in in history and antiquity the other nations were idolaters, and we innovated with our ideology. But we've moved away from that. And as other nations have developed worldviews that we see are more consonant with our own, that have a moral basis, that are linked to some sense of the spiritual essence of every human being mm -hmm. who's, crea who, who's created, then we ought to say to ourselves, well, if we have a right to our particular way of being, that right also guarantees the right of others. And in fact, our particularity is dependent upon their particularity. Mm -hmm. Let me put another, let me give you another image. I grew up in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. Now, when I was a young man, um, they cut down the last tree on my street. So a tree didn't grow in Brooklyn in, <laughs> in, my, in my age. Uh, but I know that there were people who grew up in other parts of the world that they that were filled with trees. And it dawned on me at some point that their view, their worldview was different from my own, if only for the fact that their experience of the world, their experience of nature, hence their experience of divinity, was different from my own. And that my notion might actually be enriched, not that I would be converted to their mm -hmm. way of being, mm -hmm. but their way of looking at the world might add mm -hmm. something to so, my... So truth isn't some objective mathematical calculation. It's really informed by our unique experiences. Correct. And we all have different accesses to this... And the truth. divine is enlarged mm. by pluralism. God's investment in humanity was an investment in the fact because God recognized at some point mm -hmm. that in myself, I am in myself. But in humanity, wow, yeah. I can really grow yeah, yeah. exponentially. Yeah. I mean, that, that's the, I, I'm not I sure that the investment was so, <laughs> I, so I, I remember you taught me this once. There's some Hasidic thinker, maybe you'll remind me if you recall, that says, Elokei Abraham, Elokei right. Yitzchak, right. Elokei Yaakov. They're different gods. The Ma'or of Hashem. They have a whole different, Ma'or of Hashem. They have a different God in it, so to speak. Well, each, and not only that, each, each, each um, uh, one of the patriarchs um, developed a different dimension of their sort of spiritual essence, yeah. and what they what they what they uncovered was mm -hmm. that in fact, at, at, or well, let me back up for a moment. When 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 the, the Maor Hashem is commenting on the fact that when Moshe asks God for his name to reveal to the people of Israel who sent him. Um, so, so God says, eh -ya -asher eh -ya. Mm -hmm. and the Ma'or Hashem is his question, in my mind, with a little bit of humor is, how successful do you think Moshe could be if he's speaking to a group of slaves who want to know who God is, and he answers, eh -ya. Yes. what kind of answer is that? Who will, are you? I will be. I will be. Well, what kind of answer is that? Well, the answer is, I'm freedom, because I'm not yet. Mm -hmm. I am becoming, and I'm becoming because 
Each one of you will add a dimension, meaning your freedom is itself linked to the, to the notion of God. Right. Because in God there's growth. There's a pos there are new possibilities right. in God everywhere. That's why, that's why it seems to me there's a root to pluralism. Pluralism yeah. is not only something that we tolerate, Pluralism is essential. Yeah. Now, let's go back to the biblical... Well, there's one other thought before. I saw, I saw recently, so, you know, athe uh, atheists will often say, oh, humans have a desire for God, so they project God. Uh, we're not created in the image of God. God is created in our image. But I saw in a Hasidic thinker recently that actually it's because we project God that makes God true. Because it's from our Tzalem Elohim, it's from our image of God, that we project. And so each of us projects a notion of what's true and good, and that projection is true because it comes from our depth, in a sense, also. It provides a broader tapestry of truth because in the plurality, we're all contributing to that. And, 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 and as you said yeah. earlier, it results in each one of us from within ourselves and also from our experience, our yes, encounter. right, right. Our, right. our encounter with beings. You were about to say, the biblical... Yes, so, so there seems to be a biblical um, uh, imperative, which is that the world was created in order to have diversity. Mm -hmm. Now one of the things that I didn't understand, cause I, I, that I've never understood, and I want to go back to a question that you asked me before in our conversation, and that is how someone can be a pluralist regarding other religions and not be a pluralist within their own religion. Now I understand that because it's a deep-seated uh, psychological compulsion to uh, and a sense of fear that I can't allow them to they, they they can't have something. They the no Christians okay, but another Jew has a different right. point of view. Right. Right. That threatens my sense of right. of my Judaism. But it's you know, but but it's not just inconsistent. It ridicules one's own right. view of of the nature of humanity. I once had a conversation with someone who was very meaningful to me and very important to me, and I said to them, "Tell me something. Is was Martin Buber a religious Jew?" I know that you think the Pope is a religious person. What about Martin Buber? And I thought, and I think that that's a difficulty for some, yeah. for some. Yeah. And we're talking right. about Orthodox Jews, right. yes. especially. Right. Right. But I guess it's a, it's the orthodoxy of any religious community yeah. that has that doesn't view is, is it finds it hard to view uh, another uh, dimension of that religion. Okay, so, so how? So, and I was so, yeah. so I want so, yeah. so 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 again in anticipating the point, you know, so denominations are really political expressions. Yeah rather than religious expressions, uh -huh. because it seems to me that the religious person yeah. might want to invite that type of difference and wouldn't invest in mm. it. Wouldn't inv now, now I, 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 let me... Let me, let me Sorry, so it, it's, it's constitutive of being religious, that the being religious requires a, 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 an epistemology of pluralism. Right. So, so, let, so let, let, me, let me go to Israel now for a moment. Okay. It, in Israel, the denominations have a lot of difficulties. However, I might say that pluralism in Israel might be richer than the pluralism in the United States. Hmm, that's surprising. Because, for example, on Friday night at the Tacht, now of course this is something that can happen in society where people are all preparing for, sa for Shabbat. Right. Whether you're religious or not, there's right. a Shabbos coming. So in, the ta uh, in Jerusalem, in, uh, I guess in the summer season, at the ta maybe it goes now all year long, at the Tachana, at the train station. There's a Kabbalah Shabbat. Now the Kabbalah Shabbat happens to take place before Shabbos. Okay, before the onset of, before sunset, and before candle lighting. However, people come together with Kippot, without Kippot, Orthodox Jews, non-Orthodox Jews, and they're singing and celebrating the coming of Shabbat together. This doesn't happen in the United States. And that means because they're not, specifically because they're creating a national religious experience that's not linked, that need not be linked to denominations, mm -hmm. but that has an ex where where that being part of a spiritual community is an expression of the communalism of of the Israeli experience. I might even say it's a positive expression of Zionism. So, so how so how do we get there in the in the diaspora? In the states, the, the divide could not be larger in, in, uh, than, than it is today, since the Second Temple period, right? I mean, how do we actually cultivate in, in our educational experience this value of plurality? And sort of how practically do we kind of, is there any, is there any chance of kind of healing this, this fracture? It, 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 it seems to me it's not going to happen. Uh, I mean, of course you need the rabbis, but it's not going to happen unless, uh, you know, youth groups 
children right. are meeting with one another right. and learn to see the humanity and the right. religiosity of one another yeah. and, 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 and open themselves up to, to something that's certainly true, which is that every community will somehow be opened, will be opened up and enriched by the encounter with the other. Yeah. The children will learn something about one another. They will learn not to fear one another, not to think, oi, oi, Orthodox Jews, you know, and oi, Reformed Jews. And I, I think that's how people think about it. I don't want to expose yeah. my child to them, look at who, uh, the type of lives that they lead. But you know what, the, the, the result might be that, it, that both communities somehow see something in the world, new, new possibilities. Uh, I, 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 I do want to say that maybe we, you know, we who are, who are sometimes dreamers um, might be guilty of not giving enough credit to people's substantial fears. Mm -hmm. They live in a world surrounded where they see assimilation right. ra rampant and they see people losing their connections um, and, and so they want to know what the safeties are. Um, so, I mean, so there's something to talk about. It seems to me that these projects might be uh, projects of co communally, communal uh, associa educational associations yeah. um, uh -huh. that, 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 that maybe that create, that, that create Shabbat experiences, right. but that are not, but, but a little different from what we've had in the past where the object is not to make everybody Shabbos observant. Right, right. Can you do that? Can you have a Shabbos observant for observant Jews and non-observant Jews where, the, where there is a general sense that we're going to keep the Shabbos, but the goal is not to make everybody... Right. A, 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 I mean, it seems today, almost to be religious today, it requires being arrogant. Well, it seems like the notion of being religious meant you're humble. Yeah. I, I'm not sure that I know what, what, what I, what, if this is true. Right. Right? So, so, so let me ask you. So, Wait, so let me tell you a story. So my <laughs> children, we were walking in Borough Park one Shabbos, and my, my children turned to me and said, do they, do they talk to us? Uh -huh. They being the Hasidim. Right. So I said to them, I said, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> so we were walking down the street, and a Hasid passed by, and I said, good Shabbos. And he said, good Shabbos. So I said, they talk to us. <laughs> and, 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 now, now uh, let me say, uh, I'll tell you a story right, in, in right, Israel. Yeah. Walking down the street, I lived in Israel on sabbatical, and my neighbor was working on his car. So I looked at him and I said, Shabbat Shalom. And he looked at me like I was, where, where did I come from? So I said to him, Shabbat Shalom. In other words, it was, I wanted him to know that as far as I'm concerned, the job is for him too. Right. I mean, right. he's working on the car. Yeah. I, I was. I, I wouldn't. I, I. I'm not telling him don't work on your car. Right. I want to greet him. I want him to feel yeah. Yeah. part of the community and understand that on on the counter, Shabbos is an excuse to overcome the usual boundaries that I have between myself mm -hmm. and others mm -hmm. and welcome others. Maybe that's maybe that's a that's right. a central religious message instead of religion being an obstacle. Yeah. Religion becomes an opening. Right, right. Okay, so my last question for you then is, how do we think about these other religions in the world and, and going beyond our Jewish boundaries? So, you know, I, I think the war against Christianity is over. Yeah. Meaning, uh, I think we're not losing Jews that they're compelled by Christian theology. We're, we're, we're losing them to real estate. We're losing them because they're, they're compelled by materialism, not that they're blown away by Christian theology. So how do we reduce that fear that we can actually really encounter, really learn from, from these other faith traditions? And, and what do you think we have to gain as Jews? Uh-huh. Interesting. So, so I'll tell you, I, I, I saw this, uh, actually I saw it in a, in, a, um, in a video clip. I was invited to a conference in Israel that I couldn't attend, so they came to me with a video to show me what, what had been achieved. And Yitz was one of the organizers with it with, um, I think with Elie Wiesel, if I'm not mistaken, Allah Shalom. And um, one of my colleagues, whom I knew well actually, I had learned with him numerous summers in the Hartman Institute, was, was being interviewed. And he said, you know, this Christian minister who, with whom we were, we, 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 were, we were talking and discussing, got up and proclaimed that God loves us. And that he loves us, and then he said, "I don't remember anybody saying that in my shul." Um, and 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 he was and and he said people were in tears; they didn't realize that God loves them. Hmm. Um, so maybe, maybe I mean I saw that with a rabbi. Yeah. So maybe if fellow people, others, Jews, meaning non-professionals would have an experience and understand how uh, um, sort of an essential religious personality yeah. has, ha has the capacity 
to transcend right. and to bring this notion of love. Yeah. What more? What more would people want in the world? And what? What, what greater sense of trust yeah. do you need yeah. than to feel that sense of support and, right. and understanding? You know, it took me when I volunteering in, in Thailand, learning learning modesty from certain Buddhists. You know, but also even further, when I've done activism with pastors um, who bring liberation theology into their uh-huh. activism. I, I was blown away by it. I said, is it, could that be Jewish you also, too? You also feel that the, you feel as if the Torah is alive. Right, the Torah is alive, and I look back, and liberation theology can be found in our sources. Rabbi Brad Artson and others who are showing process theology in this life. So, anyways, Rabbi Chaim Seiler from Brilliant Stuff. If you live in LA, please come join one of his uh, wonderful classes, UCLA. Hello. If you live somewhere else, bring him to bring him to speak in your community. Thank you so much, Rabbi Chaim. Thank you.